My name is Ian Somerville, I'm the director of SIXA, and I'd like to welcome you. I mean, if this was a, if I was a comedian, we would be actually getting to this guy now. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you to the fourth SIXA conference. The first time we've been in Glasgow, we've tried to, to spread it around, and I'm very pleased that Glasgow Caledonian could provide us with, uh, with, with such a nice facility to do that. What I want to, to talk about here, I'm going to have a short introduction, and it's not going to be half an hour, so you don't need to worry. <coughs> we'll tell you a wee bit about the background to SIXA, because it's, it's very easy for those of us who have been involved in this activity from the outset. Uh, this SIXA has taken up five years of my life now, so... <coughs> uh, to, to, it's very easy for us to forget that people don't really know what's happened. So what happened in, in Scotland is... is they, they proposed a unique initiative, as far as I know it's unique in the world, where the notion was that we have a number of world-class researchers, but they're not all in one place, they're spread out around. And that if we provide a mechanism through which they can get together, through which they can work together, we create a, a, a mass, a critical mass of researchers that's comparable with the kind of numbers you get in the large US institutions that are in places like Manchester or Cambridge. So we actually, we, 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 we benefit by working together. And, and this, was the, this was the intention across the sciences. So there was, there's research pools in various, in not quite all of the sciences, but in most of the sciences. So, SIGSA was a computer science research, but we were quite late to the party. There were other pools that have started and, and have now actually run out of funding. Uh, we, we didn't start until late 2008, uh, <coughs> having actually started the whole process in 2007. It was a very long gestation period to get the funding for SIGSA. And we learned a lot from the others. We learned, first of all, that it, it helps to be inclusive, that we welcome all of the universities in Scotland into SIXA and we think that this is one of the great strengths of SIXA that we can represent everyone. Other pools have been more exclusive and some are and some aren't members. And that's always a problematic model because the people who are outside don't have a stake in the success of the pool. It's, uh, <coughs> the other distinctive feature of SIXA compared to other research pools is our focus on postgraduate students. Our view is that if we want to improve research, the best way to do that is actually to start with the leaders of the future, you guys. Essentially what we said is we want to bring in the best students, we want to provide the best facilities in, in the world for PhD students so that we can actually have a better PhD experience than anywhere else, at least in the UK and Europe. And we have specific studentships to bring in excellent people wherever they're from. And I think this has been a particular success of SIXA. Our focus on postgraduates has been tremendously successful. The fact that we're running this conference is a demonstration of that. The fact that the, the students themselves have organized this conference is a demonstration of that success. I think it's, it's one of the things that, that we can be particularly proud of, that we got this right in SIXA. We didn't get everything right, but that is one of the things we most definitely got right. We hope, of course, that many of you will stay around Scotland, will contribute to Scotland in academia and in industry, will contribute to economic development in the country. Uh, we know that many of you won't, that you'll go elsewhere, but also that you'll continue your relationships with the universities in Scotland and continue to work together. Uh, we're, not, we're not parochial, we, we want to be outward looking, we want to have partners everywhere in the world. <coughs> the question comes, Six has been running for four years, or a couple of years of funding, where are we going next? Well, for sure we're going somewhere. That, 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 that's a definite. The, the, Funding climate, the economic situation, the world is rather uncertain at the moment, and uh, we are <coughs> no more certain than anyone else. We have a commitment from the universities 
to continue investing in SIXA so that we can carry on as a representative body for research, education and knowledge transfer. We're, we've designed a structure for SIXA2 which will allow us to take advantage of whatever initiatives are going. We're currently exploring the possibility of another tranche of PhD funding through industrial studentships. That, that's something that, that may or may not be successful. And uh, <coughs> we, we, we want to continue and we hope that the universities will continue to collaborate and fund activities such as this one, such as our distinguished visiting fellowships, such as our summer schools. So for sure SIXA, I, I mean I think SIXA is the most effective collaboration of universities that the world has ever seen in computer science. I mean, I don't know about other disciplines. I think, I don't know anywhere else in the world where we have such an effective body. And I think it's actually, it's a great privilege to have been involved with this. And I think what I want to say to you is take advantage of this. This is, this is a fantastic opportunity which you will not get elsewhere. You know, take advantage of what's going. Go and talk to distinguished visitors. Make a point of going to summer schools. Uh, summer schools, you can go to summer schools outside of Scotland and there's funding available for that. So make a point. Think about your PhD is not as something narrow. I remember when I started doing a PhD. <coughs> the, thing I, the thing I really enjoyed was going to coffee. <coughs> I heard all these bright people talking and I had no idea what they were talking about. Okay? And that's where you learn. It's very easy when you're doing a PhD to, to put your head down and talk to the people in your office and never and, and focus on your speciality, simulation or HCI or whatever. Don't do that. That's a big mistake. Make a point of going to coffee. If you work in a building where people are on several floors, go to different floors. Because normally, when people are on several floors, they just stay on their own floors. Broaden your knowledge. A PhD, the time you've got as a PhD student is, is, is the opportunity where you have to actually broaden your knowledge as well as deepen it. Don't just become a narrow specialist. Take advantage of going out and talking to other people. You will have no idea what they're talking about to start with, but over time you'll learn. And that's where you can actually go out and have conversations about all sorts of things. So the best decision I made as a student was actually to go to coffee. I must admit that. Uh, I actually, the things I learned going to coffee have been far more used to me than the things I learned as a PhD student, in all honesty, uh, because they've uh, carried on and the world has moved on from the 70s in, in what we did as a PhD student. <coughs> so, <coughs> this is one I'm really pleased to see you're here because it shows you are taking advantage of some of the opportunities. Uh, we've got a great bunch of speakers, a great programme. I'm not going to embarrass myself by thanking people because I would forget people and then I'd feel really bad about it. But I think all of the organisers, thanks very much, you've really done a great job and I'm sure you'll enjoy the rest of the conference. Okay, so... Thank you.